it's funny that NXT is the shortest out of most of the uh, WWE wrestling shows besides 205 Live, but it's the best show in terms of wrestling for the most part. Okay, look, you have Aleister Black defeating Bobby Fish, who actually debuts on NXT, and it's like, okay, wow. Despite Bobby Fish being in the game for about 15 years, yeah, you see, most people that have arrived to NXT have been in the game for a long freaking time. And I appreciate that they are trying to give them, like, the, the NXT is basically like the tryout session, even though certain people don't fucking need it, like Joe or Nakamura, but or Bobby Roode. Anyway, yeah, but Bobby Fish, you know, he got beat by Aleister Black. I mean, go figure. It, it's it's not that I object against that. It's like, all right, but you, you come, you arrive on your debut, and it, it, you get beat. And it's like, um, all right, yeah. But anyway, it wasn't a bad match. I mean, it, look, NXT basically has the better wrestling out of all the shows, pretty much, because they leave it all in the ring for the most part. Yes, it has the storylines as well, but they leave it all in the ring. Speaking of leaving all in the ring, you have your Mae Young Classic going on. And the Mae Young Classic is basically a, you know, a bracket of tournament. And, and it's like, all right. But I'm wondering, okay, once this tournament gets done, is, you know, what's going to happen to the woman? You know, is she going to be in NXT or is she going to go straight to the WWE roster and get shat on by the two rosters that are there? Because, yeah, just... Anyway, um, Vanessa Bourne, yeah, she won her match, but I'm just like, I just want to see what happens at the end of this Mae Young Classic, on how it's going to be dealt, on what are they going to push, are they going to push against Asuka, of, of all people, or are they going to push straight to the main roster, or is there going to be type of any push at all, who freaking knows at this point, so, oh my god. Okay, you get Johnny, Johnny Gargango, he, he comes out and he addresses his future. Now, he says that he intends on wrestling at NXT TakeOver, but didn't specify an opponent. So, that's just wide open at this point. But he did specify that he needs to become Johnny Wrestling again. Ooh. Okay. So, maybe he's going to have a singles career, and a good one if they freaking hype, if they f build him up correctly. I mean, he could be a mid-card champion on the main roster if they allow it. And then you have the NXT Tag Team Championship match. Okay, look. You have the Authors of Pain going against Heavy Machinery. Which, the, and funny, Authors of Pain retain. It's going to take a lot to get, these belt, get the belts off Authors of Pain. I mean, the Revival didn't do it. DYI didn't do it, and now those teams are broken up or gone to the main roster, so, I mean, they're going to have to do something big, and maybe Heavy Machinery is going to get it down the road, but as of right now, Heavy Machinery just tried, and they didn't get the belts. I wonder what's going to happen if, if, if Alters of Pain actually hits the main roster, if that happens. I, look, I stated it you know, in my other review reports that there are too many heel tag teams as it is. There aren't many face tag teams that we could take seriously on the main fucking roster. There just aren't. I mean, especially on Raw at this point. But that was NXT. And again, for the shortest of all shows, it had the best wrestling. Anyway... Um, do you agree or disagree? Am I full of shit? Leave a comment below. I'm always open for a debate about wrestling. Hit that like button. Hit subscribe. NXT. Yeah. Watch it. Get hooked on it. Believe in NXT because it's the best show in WWE at the moment. Drop kicks, body slams, throw motherfuckers over top rope. Both feet hitting the floor. Yes, I'm a wrestling fan. This is the theme. And I'll see you later. Credits. Thank you.